The House will come to order. Prayer by the chaplain. Thank you. It is such an honor to open this session in prayer today. I truly respect every ind individual in this room and the calling that God has placed on each of your lives. And I acknowledge that none of us can fulfill our calling without the wisdom and discernment of the Lord. So I ask that you would join me today in honoring him and in seeking his will. Let's pray. Lord, we humbly come before you today with hearts of gratitude. We thank you for the opportunity to live in this great democracy. We thank you for the opportunity to serve you and to represent the people of Minnesota. We recognize that you bless nations who honor you and you allow nations who dishonor you to fall. As servants of the state of Minnesota, we desire that this state and this nation prosper. So we take time to honor you today. We remember your words to Daniel. Do not be afraid, since the first day that you set your mind to gain understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And you gave favor and protection to Daniel. Lord, your word is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword, judging the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So, Father, we humbly submit ourselves to you this day, just as Daniel did, asking for forgiveness of hard hearts. Lord, would you replace pride with humility? Would you reveal lies and deception and grant discernment of truth? Would you inspire our thoughts and our actions? Would you use each of our individual gifts, talents, and expertise for your glory and for the good of your people? May we see our colleagues through the lenses of love and humility. May we truly work together with integrity to serve you and our constituents. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayer. May we humbly submit to you this day and in the days to come. May we continue to look to you for truth, wisdom, and understanding. And may your will be done in the state of Minnesota in 2024. And all God's people said, amen. The chaplain for today is Reverend Sarah Willie, Girls Ministry Director at Bemidji First Assembly of God, Bemidji, Minnesota, and the sister of Representative Daniels and Representative Rarick. Pledge of Allegiance. Please remain standing and recite the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Members, at this time, I would like to introduce our new House member, Bianca Vernig, representative from District 52B. Please join me in welcoming her to the Minnesota House of Representatives. Clerk will take the roll. The clerk will close the roll.
A quorum is present. The clerk will read the journal of the preceding day. Journal of the House, 93rd session, 2023, 77th day, St. Paul, Minnesota, Monday, May 22nd, 2023. If there is no objection, further reading of the journal will be dispensed with and the journal will be approved as corrected by the chief clerk. Hearing no objection, the journal is approved as corrected by the chief clerk. Reports of standing committees and divisions. A copy of this order of business is on your desk and online. If there is no objection, the reports will be adopted. Representative Damoth. Thank you, Speaker Hortman. Um, I would request a, a separate vote be taken on the committee report relating to HF 1930, and I request a roll call. Representative Damoth has requested that the House vote on the committee report on House File 1930 and has requested a roll call. Seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. That's the only report we have. So, discussion. Representative Damoth. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I appreciate that. Um, members, it is good to be back in St. Paul, um, ready to deal with the priorities that are facing Minnesotans. Unfortunately, given this particular committee report, it seems like the majority once again have the wrong priorities. Democrats could have heard any bill during the interim. They could have heard public hearings on school resource officer fixes could have heard bills on, or hearings on reducing taxes for Minnesotans, making their lives more affordable. But instead, the only bill that was given a hearing during the interim was one on physician-assisted suicide. I can tell you that we haven't really heard from Minnesotans this being their pr top priority. Minnesotans are more concerned about fixes that would be affording gas knowing that the majority raised taxes on gas. Minnesotans are concerned about being safe in their communities and in their schools for students and staff, but yet no hearing was given for the school resource officer issue. So I want Minnesotans to know now that we hear you, we hear your concerns, and we intend to fight for them. We need to return some sanity back to St. Paul as soon as possible. This irresponsible one-party majority has done enough damage already. Let's reject this committee report and instead start focusing on the real issues at hand for Minnesotans. Members, I would encourage a no vote. Let's reject this committee report, sending it back, holding it in committee so we can get to the real work at hand. Discussion. The member from Olmstead, Representative Liebling. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Yes, it is good to be back in St. Paul, and here we go again. So um, we can walk and chew gum at the same time. We know that. We have committees that deal separately with different things. We gave this bill a hearing during the interim because we knew that we have a lot of work to do this session, and this was a bill that really needed a lot of time for people to weigh in, and indeed we heard it for our I think about four, maybe five hours, we allowed people to testify. We took testimony from about 70 or 80 people, I believe. Um, so this um, is just a committee report like others. I know it's unusual to hear, actually have hearings during the interim, but in fact, it is possible. It is uh, completely acceptable when the committee already is in possession of the bill, and so I would ask for a yes vote, Madam Speaker. That is the correct vote to advance the committee report to its next committee. Thank you. Yes, members, just a reminder that a yes or a green vote is a vote to adopt the committee report on House File 1930, and a no or a red vote is a vote to not adopt the committee report on House File 1930. Further discussion? Seeing none, the clerk will take the roll.
The clerk will close the roll. There being 70 ayes and 61 nays, uh, the motion prevails. The committee report is adopted. Introduction and first reading of House Files. The following House Files have been offered for introduction today. Chief Clerk will report the House Files and give them their first reading. Introduction and first reading of House Files 3343 through 3588. First reading, House Files 3343 through 3588. There's a motion at the desk. The clerk will report the motion. Pursuant to Article 4, Section 19 of the Constitution of the State of Minnesota, Damoth moves that the rule therein be suspended and an urgency be declared and that the rules of the House be so far suspended so that House file number 3489 be given its second and third readings and be placed upon its final passage. The member from Stearns, Representative Damoth, to your motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. That is my motion, and I would request a roll call on it. Representative Damoth requests a roll call on her motion to declare an urgency and suspend the rules. Uh, all those in um, seeing 15 hands, there will be a roll call. Representative Damoth. Thank you, uh, Speaker Hortman. And it is good to be back that we can address the issues that are fully at the hand and on the minds of Minnesotans. Um, we know that this specific issue on fixing the school resource officer issue that was passed last session, we know that is top of mind for Minnesotans. Uh, this specific issue, though, cannot wait any longer. We heard our governor say that he wanted a quick fix on this. A quick fix would have been a special session the end of August. That did not happen. We know that all schools that choose to have school resource officers should have them back in their schools immediately. Last year, Democrats rushed through a change to state law that resulted in the school resource officers leaving schools. When that issue was brought to us, Republicans immediately began calling for a special session so we could get the SROs back in schools to keep our students and our staff safe. Unfortunately, Democrats irresponsibly have kicked the can down the road, and I believe that even 34 of you have signed a letter opposing rolling back this law to ensure that our students would be safe. Republicans have already held a public hearing on this topic. We have already heard why getting this fixed is of utmost importance. We don't need further hearings, we need to act. Republicans are ready today to bring this bill forward, amend it to make sure we address all of the issues raised by law enforcement and pass it. Democrats have delayed fixing this long enough, leaving our students and school staff less safe. We cannot wait one more minute. Let's declare an urgency, fix Representative Frazier's bill and pass it. I would request a roll call on my motion, which I already did. And members, when it is time to vote, I ask that you would vote green to declare this urgency. Discussion. The member from Hennepin, Representative Frazier. Thank you, Leader Damoth. And I, I, you know, I'm not broken. I don't need to be fixed. But I will say this. We heard stakeholders. We heard law enforcement say they needed some clarity on this issue. Um, we've also heard from, um, from education members saying that they want to have some clear guidelines on this issue. We, have in, we are engaging and we will continue to engage all stakeholders, which is why it's important to have these committee hearings. We're going to hear from the people, all the stakeholders involved, because there are many. I know people may think about schools and they may just think about teachers. Maybe they think about principals, maybe not so much about superintendents, but all of these folks have a stake in this. And so we want to make sure that we hear these folks out. But more importantly, we also want to hear from our youth. Now, we're going to have these hearings. We're going to have them communicate to us what they like to see, what they believe they need in their school districts and in their buildings, and particularly with their SROs. I think that is vitally important. So we should not bypass that process. The complaint was we bypassed that process before. We should not do it now. Thank you. Further discussion? Where's he from? Where's he from, though? Scott. 
The member from Scott, Representative Bakeberg. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'm easily forgotten, I guess, right? <laughs> I just couldn't remember your county, Representative Bakeberg. That's all right. That's all right. Well, welcome back, everyone. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed my recess. Uh, I have been back in my building serving as one of those administrators, Representative Frazier. So I'm not a superintendent, though, so maybe I still have some clout. But I've enjoyed being back at school. But I think one of the things that um, has been troubling is um, we, we have to address this issue with our school resource officer. Our, our school resource officers are critical aspects of keeping our schools safe. I recently had a conversation with one of my colleagues, and he said, Ben, it's not a school resource officer. I keep hearing that, and that's kind of disappointing. Their real job is building relationships with kids. They are a school relationship officer. That is their job. That's what the, the officers that I've had the privilege to work with, they build relationships with kids. But it's important to remember that they are one aspect of keeping our schools safe. We passed a number of mandates in the last, in the last session. Mandates from the state level that did not take the feedback from principals, from teachers. And I have heard over and over and over again in the interim that educators feel less safe in their school. I had another conversation and it, it was with a, with a superintendent, and he was telling me about a fight that happened in his school. And there's this mindset that, that the school resource officers are the only ones that address safety in the schools. As a building principal, I am one of the first people, but it's our teachers that are the first ones that are keeping our kids safe in school, and we, we forget about that. If we trust our educators, if we empower our educators, kids understand the expectations in school. There's clarity. Teachers are very clear and they have freedom to teach because they know that they're gonna be able to just teach the content. And most importantly, when teachers know that they can teach, kids are going to be able to learn. So I've talked with countless administrators, teachers, about this language. And there's two common themes that come up from this language. The first thing is, is just the dis divisiveness around it. I heard over and over and over that if, if you want school resource officers in schools, that you must be for choking kids. At a very basic level, that's insulting. There are a number of educators on both sides of the aisle that choose to go into education because we want to love and serve kids. And when people pile on and say divisive rhetoric, it does not help. We wonder why we have a teacher shortage, an educator shortage. That is one of the reasons. The other thing is there is a ton of confusion. So Representative Frazier, I'm glad that we're going to address it to provide clarity. Because when we provide clarity, that, then people can work within the framework and they have freedom. So I, I had a, a constituent reach out to me, and he's a current teacher. And he was, to, to be fair, he was very upset. And I understand why he was. Because all of us that are educators, we are trained in something called CPI. It's Crisis Prevention and Intervention. There are some holds within it, but the bulk of that training is all de-escalation. It's all around de-escalating the situation. So much so that they train us how to stand to de-escalate things. Putting our hands on a kid is the last resort. No one ever wants to do that. So I had this teacher reach out to me and he said, he said Ben, I recently had a, a, a student who was, was having a bad day, I'll say that. And because of this language, the teacher was not able 
to do the train, do the hold that he had been trained to do for years. So he, he had to do a different hold, and his nose was broken by that student when he snapped his head back. His nose exploded, blood everywhere. Hundreds of kids watched that happen. That's unacceptable. He had done the hold safely, but in the current language, he can't do that. So this is a first step to get school resource officers into schools, but we have a lot of work to do to make sure our schools are safe. I would just, I would encourage you to support this urgency. Let's get this done, and let's listen to the boots on the ground, the people that actually do the work instead of people who are paid to lobby. And let's do it for those kids up there. Let's get it figured out. Let's put our partisan differences aside and get this done for our kids. I'm going to end on this. There are a couple of us that recently went to a principal conference to get feedback about the administrative or about the, this last legislative session. If you want to see the feedback, I'll, I'll share it with you. But this stuck out to me. So this is a principal that said, I'm tired of learning about certain bills that created a problem, and the answer was, well, that's not what we intended. Let's actually talk to the people prior to passing bills so that we don't repeat this and our administrators don't feel left out in the dark and our educators don't feel left out in the dark. Vote green. The member from Dakota, Representative Witte. Thank you, Speaker. Um, welcome back. Um, glad we're all here. Uh, the day after the Super Bowl is uh, a 16 million call in uh, for Super Bowl um, uh, flu, so I'm glad you're all here. Um, how many have been an SRO in a school before? I had the opportunity to be an SRO. And what I've always said on an SRO, it's about relationships, um, resource, building trust, and uh, preventing and deterring crime. Uh, I appreciate the fact that we have uh, recognized that this needs to be fixed and that we can uh, work together, as I've always said, reaching across the aisle and having a bipartisan solution to this. When I was an SRO, uh, there was an incident with a student. Uh, he'd come into my office. Uh, thank God Darnell loved candy. When he ate the candy, um, he would talk to me, and uh, he wanted to play football, and his goal was to go play D1 football. But he also was confl conflicted because he was involved in a gang. And we built a relationship that you probably would never get out on the street because I was in that school. And this speaks more to his character than anything, that he wanted to work with me to keep our school safe. And so he would tell me where uh, incidents might be happening, and I could show up and be there before the incidents took place. And it looked like it was, uh, I was Superman. I knew everywhere. But this is a kid who cared about being a student, getting an education. The unfortunate thing is a couple years after school, um, Darnell never realized his full potential or dream. He ended up getting killed in uh, Gary, Indiana. But he will always be remembered for the character that he uh, shared with me. When this issue was brought to me in uh, July and I reached out and uh, we held that first press conference, we could have had a solution very simple, very narrow to fix this problem. Unfortunately, we waited to today and we should not have another incident within our schools. Uh, we saw what happened in Mankato where the student got kicked and slammed to the ground. We saw recently what happened at St. Louis Park and uh, the issues that happened in the school and then after school with parents showing up. We had a recent incident in Minnetonka and even in my own district, Lakeville North, we just had an incident where two students were going uh, and fighting right on the ground. And, and the, the issue can be resolved really quickly. I'm going to provide a, a DE3 that offers a clean and simple fix. It's going to provide clarity and peace of mind 
to get our SROs back into school and um, hopefully keep our schools safe. Over the uh, interim, we held a listening session with critical stakeholders uh, to understand better why the issues needed to be fixed. We listened to our students, school, um, staff, law enforcement, and those impacted by violence in our schools, and overwhelmingly failed or favored having SROs on site. In fact, uh, over 90% of students in the recent student survey want SROs in their school. That's 90%. And so I appreciate the fact that we are going to start listening and hopefully learning and understanding this issue so we can move forward and lead. I think it's safe to say we all want our schools, kids, and teachers to be safe. I ask that we start this session off by coming together for a bipartisan fix uh, for our safety of our schools and for our students and teachers. This issue is not resolved until 100% of our SROs are back in the schools and we pass the fix into law. Thank you. The member from Sherburn, Representative Novotny. Madam Speaker, I just <clears throat> would like to speak to the situation as it moves forward, and I would like to make a couple of brief points that we consider. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first being, this was a bill that was written and sponsored by people that do not want school resource officers in the school. When we look at the groups, the solutions, not suspension coalitions, they don't want law enforcement, SROs in the school. I would ask as if we go forward and we go with some of the proposals that Representative Frazier has about having a task force to put this together, that we have someone on the board that isn't specifically against it, but actually wants to fix the solution and make it safe for all students and all staff. The other point I just want to make out, make perfectly clear is as we go forward, the task force as is proposed will just make a recommendation to the post board. The post board being responsible for the actual writing of the model policy. Keep in mind, there are 17 members on the post board. Every one of them is appointed by the governor. We ask that the legislation is gone through this chamber and the other chamber, and let's make sure that it's actually molded by people that have an interest and knowledge and there, that there is bipartisan support. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Further discussion on the motion? Representative Frazier. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and thank you, uh, representatives, for the comments that you shared. I, I really, I really would want to point out that much of what you said means you should support this bill. I mean, this bill creates a process for all those stakeholders to be heard. This bill creates a process to create uniformity, comprehensive uniformity, and transparency throughout the state. We don't have that right now. So everything you've said actually supports going through this process, allowing the post board to draft the model policy with those stakeholders in the room. And I got to be honest with you, as we've had these conversations with stakeholders, the one thing I know for certain is that they're missing each other. People are in one corner screaming, another corner screaming, but they're not hearing each other. That's an important part of this process is that they get, we get them together and we have them understand what the concerns are. And at the end of the day, they all want to create the safest environment possible for our kids. And I've heard multiple of you say that SROs are not the end all be all for that safety. And that's what we're working on, a process that is comprehensive to create that safety for our kids so that all they have to be concerned about is learning when they come to school in the best environment possible so they can be the best of themselves. Thank you. Representative Damoth. Thank you, Speaker Hartman. I just, uh, members, before we take a vote on declaring this urgency, I just want to make sure that I can leave you with a couple of details. We, it is very important that we hear from all of the stakeholders. Just a few days ago, there was uh, an informational opportunity with bipartisan uh, attendance 
hearing from law enforcement, school officials, and students. Um, there were a number of us that were in that room, and it was very telling. A couple of the takeaways there, one of the most impactful was for Hennepin County Schools. The 911 calls have increased 53% so far this year with schools without SROs in them. And then when you think of the students, the students that testified, they were, they were brave enough to stand up and share their concerns. They talked about the positive impact that a school resource officer can have, non-uniformed usually, but how the positive impact where students that are facing situations where they have been violated, that they are able to report that in a safe manner, that isn't taking place. The other thing that one of the students said was when there is an issue within their school, their entire day becomes disrupted because all of the staff has to be focused on handling the issue at hand that normally a school resource officer would be doing. So members, please vote green to declare this urgency. We can bring this forward and fix this today. Thank you. The clerk will take the roll on the motion. The clerk will close the roll. List the guard votes no. There being 62 ayes and 69 nays, the motion does not prevail. Motions and resolutions. There are copies of non-controversial motions at the House desk and online. If there is no objection, we will take action on these motions first. Hearing no objection, the motions prevail. Announcements. Representative Long. Madam Speaker, I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 4 p.m. Tuesday, February 13th, 2024. Say again, sir, I could not hear you due to the shuffling. Sure. I move that when the House adjourns today, it adjourns until 4 p.m. Tuesday, February 13th, 2024. Representative Long moves that when the House adjourns today, it adjourn until 4 p.m. Tuesday, February 13th, 2024. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. Representative Long. Madam Speaker, I move that the House do now adjourn. Representative Long moves that the House do now adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those opposed, please say no. The motion prevails. The House stands adjourned until 4 p.m. Tuesday, February 13th, 2024.